They've just asked me to introduce uh, Victoris Kolvinskis to the group. I don't even know if I can find the words of how important Victoris Kolvinskis is to the scheme of things in raw and living food. We affectionately call him the godfather of living food. Yeah. I can assure you that I wouldn't be here today, my wife wouldn't be doing this work, Hippocrates Institute would not exist without Victoris Kolvinskis. He's not only one of the most brilliant people I know in my life, and I know a whole lot of really brilliant people, but he's also equally compassionate, and that combination is rare, that one has the biggest heart as they have a mind. He has had more people recover from disease because of his loving, compassionate, strong words than any of us. Probably if you put several of us together, Victorious has done a better job than us. I want you to really just listen with your heart. We're blessed to have Victorious come and teach our health educator program several times a year. And what I always tell the health educators just before he comes, you may not always understand intellectually what, what Victorious Kolvinskis is saying, but if you open your heart and feel what Victorious is saying, that's the gift you're going to get from him. My dear friend, an extraordinary human being, Victorious Kolvinskis. Thank you. You're the best, my man. <laughs> Grass power! Yay! We're going to talk today about the inexpensive raw foods, superfoods that make super dudes and gals. We all want to be well, happy, and wealthy. Interestingly enough, it all comes down to attitude. Most of us just don't have the attitude. They say there are no incurable diseases, only incurable personalities. Attitude, attitude, and attitude. I know so much about attitude because I've had an attitude, a bad attitude. And it certainly has kept me backwards, but in the slime of things, uh, the many years that I was bulimic, I learned so much about toilet bowls and, and what it means to go into comas and unconsciousness and ascend into the cosmic realms. It was an interesting time, and I never thought I would ever get off this cycle of vicious behavior that was triggered by my fears. I reached out for those comfort foods, even though they were vegan, to oblivion, where if I didn't get it out of my system, I would have died from intoxication of the volume of food that I had eaten. So it was an ongoing relationship. And one of the superfoods that ended up coming into my existence, that jump-started my life, was called blue-green algae. Some crazy man called Swami Shashami, he didn't know how I was a closet case bulimic. He just kept pestering me on an ongoing daily basis. And of course, I had the excusitis for my slimness that, oh, I'm fasting. And that was a truism. I wasn't lying. I wasn't eating. <laughs> But uh, he just kept thinking that I needed blue-green algae. Well, after he told many stories of how it helped Alzheimer's disease, and of course my brain was not that far away from either senility, dementia, or alhemia. Or alhemia. <laughs> you know what I mean. I finally gave in because I knew he was relentless. 
So I took it and I tried it. And he called me every day, have you taken it? And sure enough, after much pestering, I started taking it. And within a month time, actually much earlier, I started noticing a very comfortable relationship, not only to myself, but food. And as it was what started my second round of live foodism. I've had quite a few live foodism backgrounds. Background. I'm an addictive personality. I had addiction to gambling. I had addiction to sex. I had addiction to alcohol. I had a, I was smoking three packs of cigarettes, drinking 20 cups, well, maybe not 20, maybe 16 cups of coffee on a daily basis. Fear, fear, fear. Crazy life history. So crazy that my mind just shut it all off. I have no memory of childhood. I had no childhood as far as that was concerned. I led instead the life of a mystic. Totally non-talking, right up to the age of about 17. And then, of course, the testosterone-driven personality took over to learn Ovid's poetry so I could recite something sweet to the ladies. And uh, it got me more engaged by repeating all kind of theatrical <laughs> quotes. And life started becoming more and more interesting, but initially it was a life of wonder, of inner work. And that brought on, among other things, radical psychic changes. But it, for psychic changes does not take place overnight. They are the consequence of ongoing daily disciplines. That's why in all my lectures I keep emphasizing the value of prayer, the value of meditation, and the value of stilling your mind from the crazies that are continuously reappearing in your system. Reflections of the traumatic early start, which were like in Brother Gibran's book, The Prophet, they are like bows, and we are the arrows that our parents aim and shoot it out with a lot of difficulties of entry into our own manifestation, but they have oriented us through pain and suffering into a certain kind of directive. And that ends up being our dharma. Those things are not going to be the ways of the world of the future. The way of the world of the future is that of compassion, loving parents, kindness, and supporting the dharma, which will be totally evident to the mother and father. For we are predetermined for the dance we want to express and we have choreographed it way before birth. So there I was with the help of this superfood. And what made it so superfoodish is that it is actually very complete nutritionally and it jump-started my life. And it's something that you could maintain on an ongoing daily basis, provides a wide range of nutrients, especially supporting the dance of remineralization. Most of us are severely short in one or more essential minerals. And research shows that every mineral is essential to health and vitality, even to the point that one of my favorite superfoods is enzymes. Dr. Hagevara, the physician who popularized barley grass, he said, all the minerals are the enzymes for the enzymes. They give it longevity, they give it a range of action, and they give it also the speed. And enzymes action can be as much as thousand up to a billion reactions in a second. We are a divine orchestration of the most miraculous example called life where within any single second, if you think of 10 being quite a bit of activities to accomplish in one second, try 10 with a zero, that's 100. But what about 10 
followed by three zeros. That's already a thousand. But they think with followed by 26 zeros. That's how many chemical reactions take place within your body system within every second. And no traffic jams, nobody's bumping into anyone else. It's the orchestration. But then, as we start, due to our ignorance and also our emotional trauma, we become drawn to ways to lose consciousness because we are so traumatized by the painful nature of emotional experiences, which you can feel it in your heart. Oh, we know all about those heartaches, songs of Western music. The throat chakra. I feel locked in pain in the neck or pain in your butt. All emotional components associated with your chakras. And this pain is so severe that it can lead to a life of struggle, endless struggle against suicidal behavior. And all we do is accomplish is a slow suicide and die at 60, 70, 80. For we are physical immortal, it's meant to stay here as long as it takes to accomplish our dharma. So superfoods are noted for one thing. They can really help you to jumpstart your life and provide some really superior quality of life as you get your emotional baggage straightened out so that you can align yourself to the truth that will come through you while you are in a more alkalized state, in a remineralized state, in a reoxygenated state, in remicrobialized or recolonized state, then you can start thinking clearer or clearer and start being naturally gravitating to feeling comfortable instead of requiring and demanding comfort food. We did a study with uh, Simplexity some years ago. It was in a pre-published state submitted to the University of Illinois Medical School. It was entitled Superfoods Treatment of 200 Incurable Diseases. These people had no lifestyle changes, and yet they overcame, including emphysema. I met the woman in four months she had no more emphysema, yet before that she was on an oxygen unit 24-7 for over 10 years and taking medications. Now she was taking none of these climbing mountains. Now, this is due to the increased alkalization, remineralization, which creates superior, stronger cells. I mean, when you start creating superior, stronger cells, I'll just share with you the impact of it that Dr. Maynard Murray, in his book, Sea Energy Agriculture, discusses taking animals that had, in particular, snell dwarf mice that had genetic damage implanted in them so they developed lung cancer within nine months and they died from this disease. These are kind of experimental animals that are available. They produce three litters and the litters produce the same effect, namely lung cancer dead in nine months. When they were given the full spectrum nutrition, I'm talking about full mineral spectrum because all the, excuse me, a significant amount of the food that was now given to these experimental animals came from sea salt. They used sea salt as, with the full spectrum of minerals, in agriculture. That was his gift to the world and research. And the consequence was, nine months go by when these animals are eating full mineral spectrum foods. Not a single one had lung cancer and not a single one was dead. Sixteen months later, not a single one had lung cancer, a single one was dead. 
That's how important. But even more so, it changes your genetic makeup, but also makes you resistant to even traumatic experiences. For what they did was fed them experimental animals with, again, full spectrum of, with this was rabbits, and gave them food that would induce high cholesterol and high blood pressure. The experiment, uh, animals that did not receive full mineral spectrum nutrition succumbed to the cardiovascular degeneration, whereas those that had high mineral nutrition, they were thriving and doing well. It just produces stronger, superior individuals that can withstand abuse of living. But eventually, that included my own grandmother, who had... Alzheimer's disease, and my mother, she was also bedridden, never to walk according to the doctors. My mother called me. I was then still working within the, within the Hippocrates Health Institute environment. She called me up and said, Victor, you're doing nothing with your life. Oh, yeah. And uh, why don't you come on home? Take care of grandmother. They had such leading invitations. And uh, my grandmother was such a jewel. Uh, she raised me, and I went home. And I thought I, w I was going to be just a caregiver, helping her to move into ascension, providing food and medication. But after a while, I got the impression that she, with her strong genetics, she might end up outliving me, and I better do something to free myself so I could go on my own life. So I started experimenting with first <laughs> wheatgrass. The woman never had living foods before. She was very strong genetic material. She formed so much flatulence that it, it pressed the gas on her cardiovascular system and she went in a coma. That scared me quite a bit. I thought, my God, now, not only my grandmother will be gone, but my mom, sure enough, is going to take care of me for good, too. <laughs> so I worked with her with reflexology, auric massage. Within two hours, she popped up and, and said something like, uh, get me some chocolate. <laughs> well, eventually I prayed. And I asked for guidance. And I knew that if she could at least eliminate the toxins out of her system, I got her mild herbal laxative. If she could only digest what was being administered to her, then at least toxemia would be stopped and she would be getting at least some nourishment. And then I gave her blue-green algae and cayenne for circulation. At that time, Victor Coleman had done research. Dr. Victor Coleman with blue-green algae and Alzheimer's disease. And he pronounced that it created a cure, very similar like Ann Wigmore made the mistake telling the world that wheatgrass cures AIDS. Well, Ann spent many, many monies trying to defend himself, eventually lost out. And of course, Victor Coleman was forced to stop his business and close shop because the FDA came around. But the blue-green algae was taken over by his brother later on and made available. So I gave my grandmother the blue-green algae, and sure enough, nothing happened. A week, two weeks, I didn't know if it was going to work. About fifth week, my mother gets up to go to work at 2 o'clock in the morning. That was her normal routine. And grandmother was already there preparing scrambled eggs, coffee, toast, and everything my mother would have liked to have. My mother thought she was hallucinating because grandmother was never to walk in her life again. She lived another three years at least, being able to take care of the household, carry down the bookkeeping, operating with a full mind. Well, of course, many years later, we did research on uh, influence on mental faculties with children. They went up in one school year by at least two grades, became the top school. We f published research, research with ADD, ADHD, autism, and enzymes. All very rapidly moved into recovery. 
So there is hope. But I watched such individuals over the years. After about five, seven, eight years, all the superfoods that they could be eating are not working. Not anymore. Because no matter how much superfoods you're going to take, if you don't address your lifestyle habits, your toxemia, eventually they will win out. So that they help you to jumpstart your life. Even a little, if you're, especially if you're not on a therapeutic program, raw cacao might make you feel much happier and less prone to the need for comfort foods. It might be your temporary lover that you are hoping for. This time it appears in a cacao bean, kind of blood. I hopefully sprout it and, however, it's nothing that you want to have it on a regular ongoing visitation. It's not an essential to long-term health. It's like vacations. Are they necessary to your overall health? No. But they certainly are fun and nice places to go. So there are a lot of consciousness altering herbals that might be very nice way to go but they are not going to be your permanent place of residency so blue green algae has done a lot to jump start people's lives as well as it's a good food in terms of overall maintenance to maintain healthy vibrant long health why is it so great? It's extremely dense in small chain amino acids that are precursors to neuropeptides that facilitate neuron production and transmission of information. So that's why it has such a radical influence on mental faculties. And you can find this information. Jeff, Dr. Jeff Bruno, a psychologist on cyberspace. It also is about five times higher in chlorophyll than wheatgrass, which is noted to be very high as it is. As a result, it rapidly increases your red blood cell and hemoglobin and regenerates your oxygen-carrying capacity by providing vehicles of transport for this oxygen. It also is grown and wild-crafted in a lake system that is noted for extreme alkalinity and full spectrum minerals. So you're getting also remineralization. But the most interesting thing is if you did color dispersion, you'd find pouring in, an, in a glass of a very tall glass, a tumbler which is thin and mixing in a little blue-green algae, you'll find its signatures spread out in a glass of water in this tumbler. It will be green at the bottom, about 70% of it will be blue, and about 10% of it will be purple. It affects all the chakras, from the heart, the green, to the blue, to the throat chakra of mental acuity, creativity, concentration, and expanded consciousness, to purple, working with your pineal pituitary and cosmic enlightenment connection. When you meditate, it gets you into deeper levels of meditation. Very unusual kind of a food, a gift of the gods. It's got a history of three billion years and algaes, and there's over 50,000 algaes that have been identified. They are, are important workers. They are responsible for at least 80 if 90 percent of the oxygen production and everything that goes on the planet. And they carry intelligence, intelligence of its life experiences that increases your own intelligence. The enzymes is the other driving force, the one of the biomarkers that is of most important notice for when your enzyme levels diminish, you are going to be moving into digestive disorders, which is shown to be the top cause for absenteeism from work, surgery, hospitalization, as well as 
medical doctor visits. It stems, if you have high enough enzymatic reserves, you'll be expanding a high enzyme volumes, but you could be eating practically everything, and your body will be breaking it down. The people who are born with very long earlobes, they have very strong genetic inheritance of enzymatic reserves. And like my parents, my God, the stuff that they ate, they lived right into their late 80s, never a sick day in their life, yet they drank hard liquor and everything else. Strong on a daily basis, not just weekends. And yet they lived, they functioned fully, they had Strong genetic, earlobes to the kilt, next to photographic memories, these people. And that's the natural state. When you are completely mineralized, enzymized, the natural state is have complete memory of everything that goes on in your life and to have access to it. So the enzymes, I had the good fortune at that time in my life Nobody wrote about enzymes. I knew nothing about it. I found a few articles of some nutrient components, which I quoted in my book, Survival, that created an influence on both metabolism as well as digestion. Matter of fact, even already then, there was a mention of enzymes in physicians', uh, physicians reference book. However, nothing was really written. And as I excavated the catacombs of Harvard Medical Library where I was trying to get lecture material and documentation and trying to create some sort of a dialogue between our experience at Hippocrates Health Institute and what is going on within the medical and scientific nutritional community, I managed to find continuously on a, on a monthly basis new breakthroughs that I was some of it was old research, some of it was recent research, but I was always drawn to all of this. And that created the foundation for my book, Survival in the 21st Century. What I found was the flagship Magnus Carta of the nutritional camp enzyme book, Food Enzymes in Digestion and Metabolism by Dr. Edward Howell. It was a manuscript form, and I read it with great ecstasy and eureka type of experience. For here was a man who was way progressively ahead of the times. Matter of fact, that book was written at the time when I was born, 1939. And it took me two years to track Dr. Howell because I didn't know whether he was going to be alive or already ascended. And I found him in Florida doing research with soil, soil-based organisms, and ways to improve the soil conditions because he saw that the whole foundation of health lay in the soil. So I convinced him, persuaded him, begged him, and he allowed me to not only to publish the book, but also to interview him and allowed me to do the introduction. I wrote a lengthy introduction updating the information to the current enzymatic research. Then I published the book and I had too many kind of funky pictures in there. So he was really not very happy with me, but he forgave me and ended up being trained in enzymology by him in terms of product development. And the first product I designed was for Dick Gregory, the Bohemian diet. It was called Vilozyme. That was a name I concocted. But it was intended to support the weight loss because as I was doing research with the weight loss, we were having not great success with the individuals until I found the work of Dr. Guitan at Tuff Medical School. He had done studies, 198 people that were studied who had difficulty in weight loss or had consistently been yo-yoing and not able to maintain that weight loss that they accomplished. One of the things that he found consistent throughout all these individuals, extremely low lipase levels, fat-splitting enzymes. So I included in this product fat-splitting enzymes. I says, well, they also have very severe acidity, so I 
included some alkaloids. I also knew that they needed to improve their bowel evacuation, so I toned that up. I helped the gallbladder and the bladder meridians. So it was a pretty good concoction. The result was we were doing experiments with our clients, and our clients were 400 to 1,000 pounds in weight. It was Dick Gregory's Morbid Obesity Center. And uh, in Bahamas, as well as also Fort Walton Beach later on. And we were able to see with males loss of two and a half pounds, with women about a pound per day. In conjunction with a plant-based raw diet, and it renewed their level of reserves. Well, that took off like crazy with an infomercial, and uh, I ended up helping to move the National Enzyme Company, which was founded by... Dr. Howell, up in Forsyth, Missouri, to go from six employees to about 120 within a matter of two years. It exploded the enzyme, not only once we showed how well it worked and how it was a driving force for an industry, all of a sudden everybody copied us. Everybody ended up having a private label of enzymes because enzymes are that important. If you take a look in the mammalians who are not consuming anything cooked, then the enzymatic composition of the infant and the parent and the grandparent and the grandparent, great-grandparent, the enzymatic composition is identical, and you can tell the difference in their cellular makeup, which one was the infant and which one was the great-grandparents. In humans, by the time you have reached 60, you have lost over 80% of your enzymatic reserves. As a result, you can't digest protein well. Individual skins become very translucent. Instead of being four layers thick, now it's become two layers thick, the skin. So enzymatic depletion is a biomarker. And the more enzymes you have, the faster is your recovery from any kind of stress. For instance, they've done research with enzymes in uh, injuries, in particular athletic injuries like spraining an ankle. They were able to speed the recovery by as much as 85% by administering enzymes every two hours. It's number one anti-inflammatory. You can go to a book called Food en it's called Enzymes, the Fountain of Life by Dr. Mi three medical doctors, Mielke, Lopez, and Williams, published in 1994, and they spent probably about a third of that book. It's all documented in the successful treatment of all inflammatory conditions. Well, interestingly enough, in May 23, 2002, science section of New York Times, Harvard Medical University announced that inflammation exists throughout the SAD diet camp they have discovered increased magnifications within their microscopes so that they were able to identify this inflammatory state, which was twisted proteins, they called it. Clinical studies were repeated at half a dozen other research centers in later years. And the Harvard University, the head of Harvard Medical University, who was conducting this research, drew the conclusion that probably all degenerative diseases, probably, they weren't going to completely make a commitment, and it was only fair, have their origin in this inflammatory condition. Now, where is twisted protein? What twists protein? Well, have you watched... If you put some eggs on fire, how they start twisting and curling around. Twisted proteins are created by fire, and this is what the people are ingesting. 
over in my book, Survival, I could document where up to 85% of the protein content of food is not available for structural and biochemical integrity due to inability to digest such foods because of the impact of fire. So enzymes pick such a key role not only in trauma, but also longevity, also in athletic performances. They published studies in karate, and they found that not only 60% reduction of the tissue damage occurred on regular usage of enzymes, but also when injuries did occur, 60 to 85 faster recovery. This is extremely important. They did it with football players. Took a whole team on enzymes. And the result was reduction of bench time by over 50%. Can you imagine what that means in terms of finances? And of course, pain and injury. It's very powerful. All Olympic coaches use enzymes. That's like a superfoods one. When you combine more of the superfoods like blue-green algae, enzymes, probiotics, a good example is Dan O'Brien. I mentioned it. Who was dysfunctional by the time 10, 11 o'clock rolled around from training. Yet, after a couple of months of being on these three superfoods, he was training into late afternoon and competed with men 10 years younger in decathlon and came home with gold. That's how dramatic it impacts. We are subhuman due to enzymatic depletion, due to mineralized depletion, due to low oxygen availability. The fact that we are, most people are in an anemic condition by the standards of 50 years ago even. And of course our oxygen levels on planet Earth are rapidly diminishing. Even 40 years ago that I picked up documentation, they said we are consuming oxygen at a rate four times faster than the production by plant life. Oxygen levels are diminishing. It went from 40% several hundred years ago down to 15% and less. Some of the city environments are as low as 10. We need oxygen for every metabolic reaction. And then there's all that issue of mucocoating, shallow breathing, low red blood cell, low hemoglobin count. The body is not metabolically very alive. And all metabolisms are carried on due to the action of the internal organs, which are becoming more and more acidified by the dietary choices of the world. So realkalizing, any superfood should be alkalizing. If you're going to be consuming something, minimal test would be kinesiology. Is this food good for optimal health and wellness and long-term wellness? You should test yourself. No matter who's telling what, will be showing how to do testing kinesiology at my workshop tomorrow. But you can look it up in any book or pick up in kinesiology or pick up Dr. <coughs> uh, the book uh, Power Versus Force, which shows how to test individually or you can work uh, in partnership. The whole issue is not what chemistry tells you, but the whole issue it comes down to, what your body is telling you. Through kinesiology, we are able to establish, as an example, with over 100 individuals tested, we found that blue-green algae needs per individual were about one capsule and no more than six. A lot of people were taking 20, 50, even the whole bottle on a daily basis totally wasting their money and creating stress and toxemia onto their system. That's true of also wheatgrass. Exaggerated volumes are not necessarily going to be helpful or productive. And even to the point where one has to be sensitive not only to the 
issue of util utilization and absorption, and, but also to the issue that what if you take something that is such a superfood that it increases your electro voltage and you start dumping such an outrageous volume of toxemia out of your cellular environment that you can overwhelm your eliminative organs. So you break out skin, you might even go unconscious or feel a headache, dizzy spells, all these things are possible. Matter of fact, due to faulty management of detoxification under the duress of cleansing, many individuals have died. Because of such high volume of toxemia, what will help is moderate, gradual, continuously getting to know yourself and moving into cleansing, detoxification, and what you seem to be comfortable with. Animus and colonics in a superfood discussion are very appropriate. Or at least mild herbal laxatives or even stronger cleansing agents, purgatives that are of herbal nature that clean out that intestinal tract and realkalize so normal peristaltic action should be taking place as you rebacterialize so you would end up having three to five bowel movements of nice formation, one foot or so long, an inch in diameter, dropping out easily in a matter of seconds and on you go with your life with no toilet. You know, they say litmus papers are good indicators of condition of your health, but I'll tell you, toilet paper is even a better one. <laughs> the more you have on that toilet paper, the more difficult battles are raging within your gastrointestinal tract. Dr. Maynard Murray says if the ultimate test was applied, namely the toilet paper test, most people would find themselves labeled as sick. Because in animal husbandry, if there's any markings on the anus, it's indication that the animal is not well. It's in a pre-sick condition, and eventually some problems will develop. So, Bacteria cultures are so important in terms of as a superfood because if one looks at for single, besides undernutrition and macromolecules, starch, protein, and fat, and if you want to look at longevity, you look at January 1973 issue of National Geographic. And the whole issue was devoted to longevity. Three areas, the Hunzas, Georgians, and Equatorians. And the outstanding feature was longevity from undernutrition. 1,500 cal calories, 35 grams of protein, and about one-tenth the fat that is averagely consumed in our culture. And usually they ran out of food by the end of the winter, and they were forced to fast. That's another cleansing detoxification. They had their aerobics. Uh, Stairmaster was the mountains because they were all mountain people, so they couldn't avoid but having a good cardiovascular workout on a daily basis. And they had to be pretty darn happy with themselves because they had limited environment, so happiness prevailed. That's a very important feature within a social environment. And they lived to long time under nutrition, but the second most important component is probiotics. All cultures that are noted for longevity consume on a daily basis some form of fermented foods, kimchi, sauerkraut, miso, tamari, unpasteurized, of course, all of it, yogurt, etc., etc. They provide friendly bacteria that are, can make up 60% of your fecal matter and more, but also they manufacture, according to Oolong and Huxley, up to 30 grams of protein in a daily basis. 
by fixating the nitrogen from the air. I quote all this stuff in my book, Survival. They also are your number one enzyme manufacturers. They make more enzymes than your body actually makes, and your body makes more enzymes than it does protein on a daily basis, according to University of Scotland Medical School. Enzymes are the first driving force, and they're the first ones to show deficiency and depletion and the impact on health. As soon as you consume any cooked food, immediately your white blood cell goes up by three to 500 percent. Indication of poisoning or inflammatory infectious condition. On raw food, it does not occur. This was shown by Dr. Kalchikov. And we keep borrowing against our existing enzymatic reserves. And many mothers are born, they with already deficient enzyme reserves. And each generation becomes less. So the children are born with such low levels of enzymatic depletion that they could be old men and women by the time they're 10 and 12. I do mean that. I was, one time I turned on the television and I watched Discovery Channel on health. And I thought I'd turn on to some channel which was on longevity. It was the inverse of longevity. These individuals were children, ages between 8 and 12. They looked like men and women of 100 years plus. Accelerated aging due to enzymatic depletion. But we are having that same effect. Old age diseases are now affecting 40% of our children due to enzymatic exhaustion, due to acidification of their system, and the overall lymphatic toxemia that are generated by the high volume of production of mucus because they're consuming foods that are, are so poisonous that it demands the body to create hydrochloric acid trying to dissolve them. And uh, Mrs. Butenko, when she goes around telling people that the greens will increase your hydrochloric acid production, it's one of the biggest hogwashes you ever heard. And the way they're justified in stating that, it's not by tests showing their increase by hydrochloric acid. They're showing it by the fact that it decreases digestive disorder as if there was a damn connection between hydrochloric acid and digestive disorders. No. The increase of superior food reduces digestive disorder, but does not increase hydrochloric acid. Matter of fact, the healthier you are, the less likely you are going to be producing hydrochloric acid unless you are consuming animal protein and cooked foods and toxic foods. On a raw alkaline diet, mark this into your data book. There is no hydrochloric acid production, neither is there a need for it. Body only does things on an emergency need basis. Possibly if you consume a bowl of salmonella, yes, the body will squirt out a bunch of hydrochloric acid to kill off that salmonella. But never because you're eating sprouts, never because you're eating greens. So we hear a lot of myths within our so-called raw foodist community. But you gotta go past those myths and examine things from another perspective, both research, personal experience. So the regeneration of our species, which is aging rapidly, with a good indicator, the testosterone level has decreased so radically as much as 60% within the male po adult po population, as well as over 50% of couples of reproductive age are sterile. We are moving into polarization of our nation. 
We can help a lot of people through superfoods that we love and care about who don't give a damn about raw foodism and all the bullshit that goes with it. But they're going to be willing to take pop a few pills if you show them some good research that is going to create magic bullet type of effect. And as they get stronger and healthier by not having to give up their addictive habits, their comfort foods, they're going to be able to start listening and become a little more open to the possibilities of lifestyle change. So it did increase me. I seem to be clearer, more functional. What more could I do? And matter of fact, they will have increased superior energy muscular force like Dan O'Brien. They'll be able to start thinking about more exercise, get them into drinking one of the most important, severely de deficient superfood, which is water. And you will find that you can help people to jumpstart their lives and make changes, especially for people that you love, your children your parents, your grandparents. I had everyone in my family on enzymes. Some of them were on blue-green algae, my uncles, my grandparents. And it made a big difference, as you heard just one of the stories. <laughs> but even more so, one of my cousins, a beautiful woman, a couple years younger than me, close to 70, she had lung cancer at the time of uh, 60. I took her to Hippocrates and uh, got her started. It was cancer, uh, lung cancer at third stage of degeneration. Everybody wanted radiation, chemotherapy, the whole works. We got her on enzymes, blue-green algae, cleansing, detoxification. She took like w duck to water. She liked it. And... Uh, Ten years later, uh, she is looking like a model. Guys who are in their 30s hitting on her, trying to get in her pants. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a wrinkle on her. She is athletically astute, meditates, mental gymnastics, reads very heavy-duty books and does about 80 to 90% of the dietary. And for her, that includes also having a cup of coffee. The thing is, it's what you do in extreme amounts that is going to destroy you. For her, it means pleasure, and I'm not going to argue about it. But it's when you start doing things on a daily basis, abusiveness, exaggerated, Overcoming your ability to regroup. Remember, all foods are poisonous. That includes our beloved wheatgrass. However, and there's a book, actually a volume that comes out every month out of the academia entitled Natural Toxins in Food, published by Academy of Science. Wheatgrass has cyanic acid, cyanide, in high volumes. When you ingest it, no, it doesn't produce the effect as it did on Socrates, because it was in a good envelope, namely the wheatgrass juice. <laughs> But normal, healthy cells can neutralize cyanic acid through the action of an enzyme called ribonuclease and excrete it, whereas cancerous cells do not have that enzyme and they are killed off selectively. The cyanic acid is found in sprouts found in many other foods. And it helps to accelerate the process of regeneration 
especially when it's done in conjunction with removing the causes for cancer, because the cause for cancer is not to, due to deficiency of wheatgrass use. No, it's due to heat-treated protein, which flood your bloodstream in an incompletely metabolized state and interferes with oxygen transport and that causes normal cells to mutate into cancer cells and cancer cells act as vacuum cleaners sucking up the circulatory protein thus allowing your body to carry on normal oxygen transport. Once the body cleans itself up the cancer production ceases and it's put aside as unnecessary vacuums. They're recycled and gotten rid of through the immune intervention. And your immune system is jump started with the action. They say if you could only jump start your immune system. Well, Dr. Leskover said there is the cables for jump starting. It's called enzymes. And with enzymatic, within 20 minutes of orally administered, the white blood count, white blood cell count becomes stabilized, doesn't keep on accelerating growing, whereas the natural killer cells increase by 1300 percent, macrophages by 700, attacking aggressively viruses, pathogenic microbes, cancer cells, breaking them down, recycling, recycling torn down tissues of your own body from exercise or from acidic condition that is causing rapid meltdown, sleuthing of your own body cells. The wheatgrass is a superfood that goes historically back. Grasses are one of the most readily powerful, empowering type of foods that you could have in conjunction with sprouted wheat. Sprouted wheat and wheatgrass are the superfood combination as a combo. It's unbeatable from point of view that not only it regenerates your libido and reproductive functions, bringing back fertility, but also can be regenerator of body form, weight gain, and all that. And it's simple to grow. It's so cost-effective. As scenes have grown it, 200, 2,000 years ago. The writings are found in the catacombs of Habsburg Library, also the Vatican Library. They got about 12,000 feet of manuscripts or that comes from ancient times. And they used it both for regeneration, for longevity, and for bringing balance and harmony between traumatized individuals and nature so that it brought on the green, brought on peace in the heart. And that brought peace throughout the body because the wars that rage in the heart leads to destructive behavior and violence. The green is the heart chakra and it totally brings on inner peace. It's also the elixir of immortality as taught by the Master Jesus that is in the seen manuscripts where Jesus, according to Edgar Cayce and many other historical documentation, took his origins from within the Dead Seas. So we are looking at growing the most powerful superfood. You can do it at home. And the best way to do it is with hydroponically. I've been doing it for over 20 years. There is, as you can see, that there is no soil in this grass over here. And all I do is soak them with about a half a teaspoon of sea salt and a quart of water and sprout them for two days, spread a quarter of an inch thick and then spread them over the tray about a quarter of an inch thick as I said and pile up another tray, do the same thing and the top tray, do it empty. And then you wash it twice a day, morning and evening by 
watering, and within a matter of about a week, without any soil, it is grown that has a taste of celery juice, not the nauseous sweetness of bee juice, which is what a wheatgrass has a very signature form. When you have enough sodium in your resources, not only does it become extremely alkaline, but also the sugar content is not as noticeably high. The sweetness is an indication of Thank you. You can reach me by visiting Victoras Retreats at gmail.com to find out about our retreat activity. You can find out more by visiting survival in the twenty first century dot com and purchase my book there at twenty percent discount. You can also get copies of the book at the bookstore here. Thank you. We love you. God bless you.